Yeah, you, you, when you're feeling down, you have people to talk to who encourage you, who will pray with you. Because indeed, God is real. Yeah, and one thing I, I feel like most of us are missing, me, yeah. it's deliverance. Mm -hmm. Be in a church. Hi guys, welcome to our segment Revealing Christ with Emmanuel. So, on this episode, we have a special guest, uh, Sister Lungi. Hi. Welcome, how are you? I'm good, thanks, and how are it's you? It's nice to have you. It's nice to be here as Yo, well. I, I waited <laughs> so long for this for this particular uh, mm -hmm. conversation. Let me not call it an interview because it sounds too formal for my liking. Yeah, <laughs> really. Yeah, yes. yeah. So... I, I want you to maybe give our viewers a bit of background of who Lungi is. Ah, oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like an interview already. <laughs> okay, my yeah. name is Lungi Lemobelwana. Yeah. I'm all the way from Val. Mm -hmm. I am 30 years of age. Mm -hmm. I am an author. Yeah. yeah. And... <laughs> What else can I say? I went to school. Should I yeah. start with those ones no, as no, well? No, 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 that's fine. That's <laughs> okay, fine. but yeah, yeah, I'm an author. I yes. write and encourage women yes. who are walking through out, like who are facing many difficulties in life. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm also an intercessor wow. by calling yeah. and I am a children um, educator, children's yes. ministry educator. Wow. Yeah. No, interesting, interesting, which means we have a lot to talk about this. Yes. There's a lot. There's a so, lot. but before we we get to the book, guys, uh, I'm telling you this book. I'm telling <laughs> you, 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 wait, wait. I have a surprise for you. <laughs> it's coming. So, yeah. just just a bit of background. Um, like you said that you're an intercessor, and so automatically you are a Christian. I don't yeah. have to ask if yeah. you're a Christian or not. So, can you give us a bit of background? When were you born again? I was born again 2011. 2011. Yeah. Okay. And how did you come to know about God? Actually, when I was young, yeah. um, at my household, mm -hmm. like my family, yeah. we were not rooted in the things of God at all. Mm -hmm. So it came a point uh, in my life, I was in grade 10, I think. Yeah. Um, I had a challenge in life. Yeah. So I was introduced in something called Obusangoma initiation. Eesh. Yeah. And that was that all happened at school. Mm. So my family were not also so rooted in the things in of the, the, yeah. ancestral things, yeah. you know. So it came as a shock to everyone. Yeah. So hence we got um I got actually let me say this. When I got uh attacked at one particular day at school yeah. where um, I was surrounded by Amasangom, mm -hmm. a lot of them at yeah. school. So it happened that when I got to school, I suddenly blacked out and a lot mm. of things happened. Yeah. Luckily, I had a teacher who was teaching me physical science at that time. Yes. She was a prophetess mm. of God, wow. but we do not know. Mm -hmm. She was there for that purpose, I yeah. think, yes. because afterwards she left school after mm. my deliverance. Yeah. So... We got introduced to a church because I did not want to be part of Amasangoma mm -hmm. tribe or like yeah. Pop. yeah. So uh, apologies to anyone who finds this offensive, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. no, because I did not believe in it. Yes. I believe that yeah. there is a God some way, yeah. though I did not know God, mm -hmm. but I know that I knew that I wanted yes. to find a place where I felt like I belonged, mm -hmm. and that was in Christ. Yes. So in 2011, that's where now we found uh, Christ as a family. Yeah. Then I got my deliverance from all of those things that uh, were, had interlinked with yeah initiations and all yeah, of that. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, wow. So it means that growing up, you, you didn't know about God? No, we didn't um, know. Like, God. but something inside of you of me told you there that there's a God, a God somewhere. There's something about, like there's something yeah. bigger than wow. anything else we can ever find here mm. on earth. Because mm. you know, in life, we tend to feel unfulfilled. Yes, you know, yes. you know that uh -uh, there's something missing. Yes, something comes, but you know that there's something actually missing. Yeah, and yeah. you tend to find that thing. Mm. So yeah, 
That's which, what which, happened. Which I believe that that's why most people are doing all sorts of things. They are yeah, looking for that looking for fulfillment. They are looking for themselves. Yeah. Like identity. Yes. Many people are facing a problem when it comes to having to know their identities. Yeah, yeah. So, and the Bible says our identity is hidden in Christ. Christ yeah. So to find yourself, you have to find God first. Yeah. That's it. Wow. Hey. Yeah, this is interesting. Yeah. So, since growing up, you didn't know much about God. Mm -hmm. So, looking at your life before uh, you discovered Christ and looking at your life after you discovered Christ, like, what would you say, uh, like, how was your life before and how was your life after? Ooh, my life before Christ. Yeah. Guys, I was broken. Yeah. I was really broken. Mm -hmm. I wanted love, yeah. but I could not get it. Yes. You know, I, I wanted to feel a certain love yeah. that was introduced by people telling mm -hmm. me, no, you know my parents, mm. they do this for me. Yeah, yeah. And you find that in your home, we are a black community. Yes. So love is shown in different ways. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we experience love in different ways. Yeah. So, and it also has to do with our foundations, our background, yes. how our parents were taught to be loved mm -hmm. or were taught what love is. Yes, so yes. they initiated it also on us, the mm. next generation. Yeah. So it caused me to be broken so much yes. because I never got the attention that I seeked from my parents. Mm. You know, mm. one was absent because my dad was a drunkard before. Yeah. And, you know, my mom was not that present yes, as yes. I wanted her to be. Mm. You mm. understand? Yeah. Work, come back home, cook for the kids. Tell them to go sleep. You mm. don't have time for them, you yeah, know. Yeah. You don't have time at all. Yeah. But, you know, it was the way we taught. Not that they did not want to show us love, but because they understood love in their own yeah. perspective. Yeah. Yeah. Different from what we think love is yes, as yeah. kids, yes. you know. That longing. So I was a broken child. Mm. I needed attention. Yeah. I needed to feel a sense of belonging. Yes. And I could not get that. And it's not their fault. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as life, we grow and we learn things. Yeah. We want to experience things. Yes. We don't get it. Yeah. We break. So that's what happened to me. I had an a identity problem as well. Yeah. You know, being bullied at school. Mm -hmm. I have faced a lot of bullying. Rejections from my other family members, like relatives. Yeah, yeah. You know, because just did not fit in mm -hmm. in what they thought I should be. Yeah. So that's what happened to me a lot of times. So I would tend to have suicidal thoughts. Yes. Wanted to kill myself all the time. Like mm. Just sit. Why is my life like this? Yeah, what yeah. can I do to stop all this pain mm. that I'm feeling, all this pain that I'm going through? Yes. So, yeah, I, bro I got broken. And then another thing added when it came to this initiation thing as well. So... Um, when I found God, <laughs> you know, when I found God, yeah. things change. Wow. It is a process, yes. but it was worth it. Mm, mm. It is a process, but it mended me as a person. Yeah, yeah. You know, it mended my heart. I felt now that actually I do belong somewhere. Yeah. I, am actually, I do actually matter. Yeah. To those who say I don't matter, you don't know what you're talking about. Because... Yes, yes. God found me, mm, you know. Mm. He left 99 out there mm. and he chased after me, the one, yeah. you know. So it gave me a sense of belonging. I found myself. Yeah. And I realized that there are actually women out there who are going through the same thing it's, that uh, I'm going through. Yes. And to tell you, for me to gain my confidence, actually, yeah, yeah. to gain my self-esteem, mm -hmm. it was through my pastor. Yes. She called me out when I was getting my deliverance yeah. and said, uh, you know you are beautiful. I was sitting there yeah. and I said, no, mm -hmm. I don't. Yeah. I don't feel beautiful at all, yeah. you know. And she said to the whole church, you know this girl is beautiful. Can yeah. you see it? Yes. And immediately when the church responded, mm. that's where now my confidence came back. Wow. You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm. Yeah, no. Uh, it's it's both uh, a sad story, but it's also powerful to mm. see that we might seek for fulfillment, we might seek for an identity, we might seek for validation mm -hmm, from from others, from others, but we only find it in, in God. God. Wow, because you know, the, the, like I said earlier, that 
that is why we have a lot of youth mm-hmm. doing all sorts of things because they seeking for that fulfillment mm. like they feel that you know what i've done all sorts of things but there's still something missing in mm-hmm. it and they keep trying everything but there's only one thing that they haven't tried they haven't, they haven't tried, tried god. god yeah they haven't tried to give their lives to god so yeah. from from your story what i'm gathering is that if it was not for god i wouldn't be here maybe you wouldn't be here today mm-hmm. so no we we thank god it's yeah. it's a powerful testimony it, it is a powerful testimony you know so yeah. when you say that i remember the song that says the enemy thought he had me yeah. but jesus said you are mine yes it it shows that many people don't understand yeah. that the enemy is out there waiting to yes. devour anyone that ca- he comes across yeah, yeah. so if you don't have a back like someone backing you yeah. you are gone yes you are definitely gone yeah. so i also did not have that backing at that time mm, but mm. when god found me i had a backing yes. you know yeah. and when the enemy thought he would sweep me out with suicidal thoughts yeah. god said no, no you are not mine this one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. no it's, it's it's amazing you know when when it comes to identity i, I always like to give a reference or an example with like things let's say for example a phone yeah a phone is known by the person who made it mm-hmm. so like us the one who made us mm-hmm. is the one who knows us uh he knows how we are like from within he knows every part of us <laughs> what we actually yeah. need to be happy to be fulfilled like all those things he's the one who knows but as people we 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 tend to look for that in other people other people yeah. you know this wise man that i love reading his books yeah. once said you cannot seek yes. um what uh, you cannot seek who you are from creation yes All, and i like it said eh hey, hey. i think it said you cannot seek creation from the created yeah you should seek it from the creator from the creator yeah yes so you can never find yourself through the created but yes. you find yourself through Christ the creator, yeah. the creator the one who made you mm-hmm. wow i yeah, know this is this is amazing this yeah. is this is powerful i i believe that as as people are are, are listening they are seeing the reality of god because people yeah. they doubt god mm-hmm. i i i have experience of talking to people at uh, people with different views about god you know and they don't believe in the reality of him Yeah. and what he can do for us but here is evidence you know this like. this segment it's it's actually uh, inspired by that the, the knowledge of knowing that there are people out there they have a perspective of god mm. which is not real yeah but then we have evidence all around us mm. of me, the existence of god let me say this yeah. most of us there's a part where i wrote in my book Yeah. that most of us are christians who are part time mm, mm. and we are seeking a full time god, god yeah. so we are seeking quick results mm. and we don't understand that yeah. christ being in christ it is a process yes. because god has to transfigure us first mm, it mm. has to he has to transform us yeah. so that we may be conformed to the image of god yes. we have to be repolished yeah. you cannot pick gold mm. and immediately sell sell it yeah, yeah. you have to refine it yes. it has to mm. go through fire mm go mm. through water yeah. so you can remove all the soil that was surrounded in yes. that gold yes. that it may become pure mm. you mm. know so many people they are looking for a quick solution yeah. so when they come to church they think Christ offers quick solutions yes. and yes. they don't understand it's a process yeah. Yeah. there are times there yeah. are seasons mm. that you have to go through True. as a christian we yeah. are standing here because we are constantly being refined yeah. we are yeah. constantly being t- transfigured yes. to be conformed to the image of christ yeah. you know so that's what people don't understand if people want to come to church mm. they should have one thing in their mind yeah. that as christ was persecuted we will be persecuted well, but yeah. it will be worth it yes. because there's an end glory to every persecution yeah, you don't yeah. remain pressed mm. when oil is made the olive has to be crushed yes, for yes. oil to come out yeah, right yeah. same process when it comes to wine mm. but people are feeling as if they need to get a quick solution yeah. in order for them to get where they are to see if god exists yeah, and yeah. it doesn't work like that no that's very true that's yeah. true you know i i got to a point where i understood that 
Christianity is not a religion. It's not something that we act mm. out, but it's who we are. Yes. You become a Christian. Exactly. It's, it's the person that you are. <laughs> the Bible and says we are new creatures. Yes. So yes. you become a new creation. Yeah. A new, you are actually placed uh, to the first order of God mm -hmm. because he formed you before the beginning of time, right? Yes. So yes. he knew what you were going to be. Mm. So he, he shifts you. When you be born again, yeah. he shifts you back to your reality Position, yeah. yes back yeah. to what he has called you to be yes, yes. yeah yeah no uh you said you you mentioned something about transformation mm -hmm. you know there's a, a misunderstanding like you said that christians they come to church expecting quick mm -hmm. results mm. however people i think they don't understand that becoming a christian that's why it's called being born again yes because you are moving from the life that you are living mm -hmm. into a new life. And in this new life, there are ways of living. Mm. It's not the same anymore. Mm. Which means that however you thought before, it's not the same way you have to think in this life that you are living. Mm. So it's it's a transition. And then because you are born, you are born as a child. Yeah. And a child has to grow for them mm. to be entrusted with certain things. Mm. People that don't understand that, it's not that God is withholding things from us, mm. but it's just that we are not in the position yeah. of receiving, receiving those, those things. things. So people, they don't want the process. They want the end result. Mm. Yeah, no, we, we are living in yeah. a, a difficult time. But exactly. what I love about this is that it, it brings people into the perspective of the reality of God. Mm. And people to know that whatever that we are talking about is not a, it's not a myth. It's not something that is... Far fetched. Mm -hmm. There are people who are living in the reality mm, of, of it God. today. Yes. We are here today talking about this because we have seen God. Yeah. We have experienced the the reality of Him, mm -hmm. that He exists. Mm. So yeah, no. Thank you so much for that for that powerful testimony. Thank you. So, before we 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 talk about the book, I don't know if I should start with that. Maybe I'll do it at the end. But yeah. So, guys, this is the book we're gonna be talking about today. Um, it's personally, I have read a bit of it and trust me, it's interesting. It speaks about women. Yeah. It speaks about women. I'm not a woman, but there's something I got from it. Um, but we're going to talk about it. Yeah. Uh, so the first thing that I want us to talk about, maybe if you can give us a bit of a breakdown of the purpose of the book. Ah, the purpose of the book. That caught my attention. I read it, I was like, wow. Yeah, no, there's, there's so know, much in this. Yeah, the purpose of the book is yeah. actually for healing yes. women, you know. Yeah. I don't know how do you mean when you say I should break it down, yeah. but I'm just going to tell you how, yes. I was th what I was thinking when yes. I was writing yeah. the book. Yeah. So the book was intended to be for all women, mm -hmm. you know, both young old yeah. married unmarried yeah. single you know yes yeah. yes you know so i i wrote the book because i wanted people to find themselves in god yeah the whole purpose of my book as a virtuous woman yeah. is because people have this perspective uh, perspective yeah. that a virtuous woman is a woman that is quiet a woman that is this so i wanted to change uh, and make them understand yeah. that no this is not the way you're supposed to be thinking. Yeah, yes. But a virtuous woman is a woman who has found her identity mm -hmm. in Christ. Yeah, yeah. Who has found herself in Christ. Yes. And who is willing um, to let go and let God take over. Yeah, you know, yeah. a, pe a person who has been burdened and mm -hmm. seeks for someone to lift that burden off their shoulder. Yeah. So I wrote this book so that um, confidence... Yeah may be restored in women, yes, you know? Yes. Because most of us are tending to face challenges mm -hmm. that take away from our self-esteem, yes, that yes. takes away from our confidence, yeah. and then we are left empty, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Because women, we go through a lot. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest. Yeah. And people come with this concept of imbogoto. Yeah, a woman's yeah. supposed to be strong. Mm -hmm. Why? Mm -hmm. It is good to let your emotions be released, yes, you know. Yes. It is good for you to be vulnerable, yeah. that God may take you and uphold you. So yeah. I am showing them 
that actually this is what God made me go through mm. and mm. other women as well that I'm in my community. Mm. Yeah. And I wrote that so that they find healing for themselves. Yes. They also find themselves, you know, in Christ. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Wow. There's, there's a part here that I read. Mm -hmm. um, let me just read it quickly. Maybe you yeah. can help other people to um, understand it better. Mm -hmm. But it says, as women, we often spend more time pampering our outer appearance mm -hmm. while neglecting our inner selves. Mm -hmm. This creates an environment that leaves us feeling empty. Mm -hmm. And what we fail to understand is that when we take care of and nurture our spirit being, our spirit being, mm -hmm. we create an environment that allows God to fill the void within us. Yes. Yeah. 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 You know what? Yeah. I've seen this a lot, mm -hmm. especially in a country in Nigeria. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's this thing of BBL. Yeah. I'm not fighting against it. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to show you that no matter how much you can change your outer appearance yes. to look beautiful yeah but it can never fill that void yeah you always have that insecure that insecure moment mm -hmm. when you look at yourself in the mirror yeah. you know yeah. but when you are with god you know god beautifies us yes he fills yes. us up right yeah and we feel content mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. ourselves yeah. and we don't feel the need to change for anybody but for ourselves yes. so most uh many women that i've come across yeah beautiful as they are yeah and beautiful as God has made them be, yes. like well shaped, yeah. they still find like find themselves not enough. Mm, mm, so I I would stand there and ask myself why? Yeah, you know yeah. why? Because you are beautiful. Mm. And they'd be like, No, I'm not beautiful. Yeah. I'm supposed to look like this because they have a certain model yeah. in their mind. Yeah. Like for instance the Kardashians yeah. who doesn't want to look like the Kardashians <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. it's like that they want to look they have this certain type of a model that they want to look like yes. a Barbie or something yes. you know that when they don't look like that they feel as though they are not beautiful yeah. no God has made us beautiful he made us fearfully yeah. and wonderfully so you yes, know so yes. I just wanted them to understand that is not about your outer beauty. Yeah. But that does not mean neglect yourself. Yes, no. Yes. It means do not focus on the outside only, yeah. but also within you. There should be balance. Yes, you yeah. should fill this void yeah. that is within you, that is telling you that you are not perfect enough, mm -hmm. that is telling you that you are not beautiful enough. Yeah. You know, you need to work on you first, that you become the reflection that you want people to see. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, it's, I, I think it's, it's, it's true. We, like, people are more concerned about their outward Out appearance. Yeah. I don't, I, I, maybe it's not only women, though. Yeah. Maybe even men are like that. Mm -hmm. uh, well, I won't say much about it, but <laughs> I, I believe that it's something that has to do with the identity that yes. we're talking about. Like, not knowing yourself mm -hmm. makes you feel like you should be like someone else. Mm -hmm. It makes you want to look like someone else. I've seen people who literally changes how they speak because yes, they want to sound, like sound like someone, someone else. else. Yeah. yeah, I've come across that a lot. Of yeah. Things, you know, yeah. even now that I wrote a book, yes. there are people who are like, ah, you wrote a book about virtuous women, mm -hmm. yet you still act like this, like... Ah, how am I supposed to, to act? act? Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, a virtuous woman yeah. is a woman that is, his her character is rooted in Christ. Yeah. It's not about how I speak. Mm -hmm. Yes, the words that I speak, I'm very mindful of them. Yes, but yes. it is not about how my voice sounds yes. or how my body is yeah, or how my yeah. face is. Mm -hmm. It's about the character that God is building within me. Yes. You know, that yeah. he, found, he finds amazing. Mm -hmm. He finds uh, me worth of... Uh, obtaining, you yeah, know, yeah. so <laughs> we come across a lot of that. Yes. So people will try to break you, even though you try, you have found yourself in Christ. Yeah. So it's up to you to stand rooted yes. in your truth, yeah. stand rooted in what God says you are, yeah. because everyone has their own definition of who they are yes. and who God says they are, yes. you know. Yes. So yeah, remain there. I, I, I believe that 
every single person is made in a different particular way yes. for a for a certain for a certain purpose. Exactly. Because I mean if we all looked the same That's the thing. You know it's not <laughs> we look the same, we speak the we same. We speak the same, it's we like walk the same like everything is just a robotic yeah, kind like, of yeah no there's no way to identify there's no there's, colors, there's no actually uniqueness mm -hmm. so we are unique in our own ways yes and you know some of the people they feel like they have to look a certain way mm. for them to be loved mm. when it comes to relationships because mm. they feel like with the way they are mm. no one will love them but yes. that's, not true. that's not true because even with everything i, I gave an example of a phone mm. we have so many phones mm -hmm. and each one of them there's someone who likes it mm. there's someone who's gonna buy it but they are not the same. And it's if sad. if I am to look at it, I'll be like, hey, this phone is ugly. You, I would never buy it. Mm. But that person who's having it, will be like, yeah, this phone is it's the, the best. best phone so ever. Mm -hmm. if people can have an understanding that with however you are, mm -hmm. God made you like that mm. intentionally mm -hmm. with like you had to be unique yeah. for a reason. Because mm -hmm. there are places you will never be if you are not a specific height. Mm. There are places you can never be because of your skin color. Mm -hmm. Like it's 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 all unique for a reason. Yeah. Everything is unique for a reason. Imagine if David was the same height as Goliath. Mm. What was going to be special about his story? Exactly. You see so there are so many things that people they uh, overlook mm. but they are important. Mm. They are very important. So yeah, no this book like I said to the viewers that this book uh, women should buy it. I was going to say everyone but men they might say ah oh, it's it's about women, so men who want to learn about women, yeah. they can buy it. Yeah, no, true, <laughs> true. I agree with that. I agree. And well, we spoke about this. I wanted us to talk about the author, but I think you covered most of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I love this part where he says, The Joseph of my family. Yes, I am the Joseph of my family. Yeah, the one with unfamiliar dreams. Yes, you know? yes. Not everyone understands you. Yeah. But because of the call that God has placed before you, like yeah. upon you, yes. you tend to be different. Mm -hmm. So that's why I, t I told myself, like, I grew up as the Joseph of my family. Yeah. My dreams are big, mm. unfamiliar. Yes. And people did not like me for that. Yeah, and it yeah. is okay. Yeah. Because at the end of the day, I rose. Yes. You know, out of the limitations of my family, mm -hmm. I'm standing today. Who wrote a book in my family line? <sighs> Nobody. Nobody. Not anyone that I know of. Yes. But yes. look at me. Yeah. You know, I stood against all odds. And I and, stood on top. And, and I believe that if everyone understood you and they treated you like everyone mm -hmm. else, you wouldn't have wrote this exactly. book. Exactly. Yeah. So that's the uniqueness part that I was talking about earlier. That mm -hmm. there's there's a w there's a reason why mm -hmm. you are the way you are, and mm -hmm. things are going the way they are going. Yes, they are pushing you towards your purpose, your purpose. towards the person you are meant to be. Mm -hmm. But then, as people, we don't understand. We want to be like the child next door, you know, but our destinies are not the same. Are not the same. We, Christ had to be crucified in yes. order for. Us yeah. to be born again in mm. order for him also yeah. to sit at the right hand of the father. Yes. You know, yeah. Imagine if he, he said, No, man, I, I uh, can't. I, I want to be like everyone uh, else. Sure. Where would we be today? Mm. So, yeah, hey, this is this is important. Uh, hey, <laughs> hey, there's a lot to talk about this in this book. Yes. Uh, I think I'm going to ask you to come back. <laughs> <laughs> I would so, definitely come back. Uh, let's talk a bit about the role of a woman. The role of a woman, you yes. know, there are specific roles yes, yes. that a woman carries out. Yeah. The first one, I think I made a mistake because I did not edit there. It is the role of a daughter, you know. Mm. It's now where you are in a training season in yeah. life. Yeah. So as a, a woman, you yeah. are being trained to become a certain um, individual when you or independent woman. Yeah. Yeah. So it is a role of a daughter. Yeah. Now, this is now when you are in a training season. Yes. Your parents are now more involved mm -hmm. in your life. Yes. So they rule out everything, every step that you take. Yeah, you know, yeah. you are being molded yes. to becoming uh, a woman that you might be or become in mm. the future. Mm. For instance, if you're going to be a mother, yes. they are training you for the role of being of a, a mother. mother. Yeah. And when you are... Going to be a wife, mm. it's also a training. Yes. So that's why I spoke about the roles 
of a woman. Of a woman yeah. So a woman is her pioneer, guys. A woman is many things. Yeah. You know, you can give a woman a, a brick. Yeah. No, actually, you build a woman a house. Mm. She make it a home. A home yeah. You know, you give her finances. Mm. She turns it into something, um, an asset, yeah. a valuable asset. Yes. I've seen this with my mom as well. Mm. You know, when mm. it, you give her something, she would come with things that we never expected with that level of budget, yeah, you know. Yeah. So she she doesn't run the fam- family finances, yeah. but she manages, manages them, them, you yeah. know. She becomes a manager, yeah. for instance, like okay. a supervisor, yeah. f- supervising things, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I, I, I see it here. So I'm going to go through the list for, for, for our listeners. So there is, as a wife, mm-hmm. interesting, uh, administrator and leader, mm-hmm. Uh, manager or family income, but maybe you can explain for us this administrator and leader you before know, people misinterpret uh, misinterpreted <laughs> it. You know, there's a friend yeah. of mine who also <laughs> spoke about that. Yeah. He said, when I was reading your book, I saw a leader. I was like, hey, <laughs> no, what do you mean a woman yeah. is a leader? Yes. I mean that she, when I mean a leader, yeah. I mean she takes care of the things that are at home. Yes. A man is a provider, yeah. but she's the one that makes sure that the provision yeah. expands. So yeah. she leads yeah. everything within the household, yes. not yes. being above her husband. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. she's not I'm a glad. leader I'm in glad. that way. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, Because I'm sure when I, when I read administrator and leader, they were like, yes, we are meant to be leaders. No, I don't <laughs> preach feminism. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I am not preaching feminism. Yeah. I don't believe in this thing. A woman and men are 50, equal. 50, no, yeah. no, 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 no. Okay. We were never made that way. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, manager of family income, you mentioned that. Mm-hmm. As a mother. And that's the last part. Yes. So, we are going to my favorite chapter. Chapter three. Mm-hmm. Hey. Uh, uh, chapter four. Chapter three is also very interesting, guys. <laughs> very, very interesting. Guys, my uh, book is, the whole book is interesting. <laughs> you should yeah, get it. No, they, they, they should read this book. Mm-hmm. They should read this book. So chapter four is titled The Power of a Submissive Woman. Yes. And then the first subtopic, it says, what is true submission? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe let me read it a, book, a, a bit. Mm-hmm. So you see, the way the, the, the reason why I loved this chapter is because when I was reading it, I didn't limit it to women. Mm. That submission, it speaks to everyone. Mm-hmm. This definition, rather. Mm-hmm. It's I, I, like I thought about it uh, in general, mm. how people view submitting under someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the way you described it here, it's telling you. That's why I chose this chapter out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Although all of them are powerful, but I was like, this one, it must be the first one. Yes. So let me read. It says, submission is often uh, misconceived as a weakness mm-hmm. or being a fool or as far as being enslaved. Mm-hmm. It is one of the topics that raise an argument and especially by women, more especially when abuse is in subject. After much study about submission, I caught a whole different concept from what submission is believed to be mm-hmm. and what it can do. Yeah. This misconception. So, I, 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 like I said, that I looked at it like um, generally. Mm-hmm. It's talking about maybe in church. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's very hard for someone who believes that they are called Mm. to submit under someone. Mm. Why? Because of this that you have mentioned. They think that is being weak Mm. or they are making themselves a fool Mm. or they are being enslaved Mm. or they are bound, they are not allowed to be themselves. Mm. But is it really what it is? No. Yeah. It is not being enslaved. Yeah. You know, (laughs) I've learned, I like, watching animals most yes. of the time. Yeah. And I've realized that, you know, there's wolves, yeah. for example. Yeah. Wolves, they form a pack, right? Yeah. Yeah. And there's a leader yes. of the pack. Yes. And the other ones, they submit to the leader. Yes. And in that way, mm. what do they gain? They, are the, they gain loyalty, mm. you know? Yeah. Actually, the leader 
gains, gains loyalty, loyalty yeah. from them. They, mm. He receives, when uh, they submit, mm. he receives and he brings back yes. even more yes. than he, what he has rec- mm. uh, received. Yeah. So that's what I have seen from wolves. Yeah. They show uh, submission, humility yeah. towards their leader in mm. order to win back his loyalty, yes. win back his influence. Mm, and mm. in that way, they stand stronger together. Yeah. So as much as you are called, yeah, right? Yeah. We are all called. We are all carrying different grace. Yes. But if you submit that grace under the leader that you are under, mm. you know you can do an amazing thing. Yes. You know, it yes. can be amazing. It can be beautiful. Yeah. So that's what people do not understand. Yeah. They think submission is being enslaved. Yeah. And it's not like that. It mm. actually has benefits. Yes. It makes you greater uh, or obtain influence. Mm, mm. I'll make an example. Yeah. Look at David. Yes. You know, David became... Um, is submissive to Saul, even mm. though Saul wanted to, to kill, kill him. him yeah. And later on, what happened? He took he the throne. The king, yeah. You know? Yeah. Exactly. So that's what happens. Yeah. When you submit, you stand to gain a lot yes. than the one you, you are submitting to. Sorry mm. about that. Mm. To the one you are submitting to. Yeah. So submission is a very powerful tool yes. in life if you want to get above. Mm. And if you want to uh, obtain influence if you want to become great yeah. you need to learn and have this trait yes. of submission of mm. submission yeah. because even god when he calls you he says let everything go mm. like let it go yeah. let it be me who leads you so you have to submit yeah. in christ we submit in order to have what God has called us to have uh, to yes. be conformed to the image of Christ mm. it takes submission christ and you cannot rule in you at the same time, yeah, you know, yeah. one has to submit. That's it. Wow. And it doesn't mean that you're being a slave. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it is reminding me of, like I thought, I thought of, I thought of so many people mm. and it reminded me of a verse. If I'm not mistaken, it must be in James 4, mm-hmm. verse 6 and 7, which says, Res- resist the devil mm. and he will flee from you mm-hmm. and submit yes. yourselves oh, under, the, uh, under the hand and of open. God mm-hmm. and he will, lifts you up. Mm-hmm. So it's it's evidence that it takes submission to be exalted. Yes. Uh, you cannot be promoted unless you are submissive. Mm-hmm. People who promote themselves, they are likely to be exactly brought down. Proud. Yeah. It's, it's considered pride. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but the Bible says that God resists the proud mm-hmm. and he gives more grace to the humble. To the humble. It's an and, act and of you, humility. And you mentioned it here that it's, yes. uh, submission is it's actually an, an act, act of, of humility. humility. You are humbling yourself. Mm. Even though you know that um, you have the capabilities of doing yes, more, more, but then you choose to put that aside. Yes. Uh, I believe that's what the Bible meant in, in you know, Philippians 2.5 when it, it says, says let this mind yeah. be in you, mm-hmm. which was also in Christ. Even though he was God, yeah. he did not consider it robbery to to come as a human being. Like mm-hmm. he put aside being God and he submitted to to what God had told him to do. This this one woman of God who said, you know, submission yeah. is a meekness. Mm-hmm. Uh, is actually meekness is power placed under control. Wow. You know, yeah. so you are placed under control. Yes. It doesn't spiral out mm, of control mm, yeah. because you understand that I am meek. Yes. I am submissive, yeah, yeah. but yet I have influence. Yeah. I have power. I have the ability to achieve what I want to achieve. Yes. It's actually an act that gives you freedom. Yes, you know, yes. it doesn't hold you down, mm, mm. but it uplifts you. Yeah. So the enemy knows that. So that's why he comes to people and tells them that you don't need to submit. Yeah, you yeah. are actually greater than this person. Mm. And it brings what? Pride. pride. Yeah. So pride is what? A pathway. Yeah. Ex- actually, yes, to yes. destruction. Yeah. Uh, uh, that's like the, the reason why the devil brings that is because that's that's the path he took. Yeah. He, he believed that he was <laughs> supposed to be equal with God. Yes. And as a result, he was thrown out of heaven. <laughs> He lost all the glory that he you had. See? So you mentioned something here mm. in the impo- the importance of being submissive. Mm. And the scripture that you quoted here, it made me think about something. So it's in Genesis mm. 16 verse 9. It says, then, then the angel of the Lord told her, 
go back to your mistress and submit to her. Mm. And then there's a part that I want to read here that says, in verse 10, it says, I will so increase your descendants mm. that they will be too numerous to count. Mm. You know what came to my mind when I read this? This was the promise that was given to Abraham. Mm. So, which means that for, what was the name of this lady? Hagar. Hagar. For Hagar to have the same grace or to partake of mm. the blessing, mm. he had to be under Sarah. Mm. So, that was her submission mm -hmm. qualifying her for the blessing of... Yes, that was upon Abraham oh. to be released upon, upon her, her as well. So, if she had said no, nope, nope. That was the end. She was that only going to have end. Ishmael yes. and that was the end of it. Yeah. But out of her obedience, out of her submission, mm. even Ishmael, although he was not part of the promise, mm. but he partook of, of the promise. The promise. Yes. And he, become, he became great. Mm. No, Ish, like I said, you know, this, <laughs> this book. Thank you. This book, I'm telling you, it's It's powerful. It's it's very powerful. So, like I said, that when when I when I read it, I thought of many people. Like for example, Elijah and Elisha. Mm. Elisha could have easily turned back mm. and said, "I can't do this." Because mm. number one, Elijah was a person who was like they say he was an angry person. Mm -hmm. He was not very patient, mm. and so many times he tried to turn him back to tell him, "No, go back. Go back. Uh, God has sent me to so and so place." You should go back. You don't have to come. But then he was so Persistent. humble mm. and he, the way he submitted, he was like, wherever you go. I will go. Like and, the story and, of and, Ruth. Yeah, I, I remember I, I read, uh, when I read about their story, when Elisha answered and he was like, as long as the Lord lives, mm. wherever you go, I will go. Mm. So he, it didn't matter the situation. Mm. It didn't matter what, uh, Elijah said to him, he was determined. He had given himself to it. So uh, it's it's more like submission is also giving yourself to a cause. Mm. Like until the end, you tell yourself that until I get to where I should be with this person, I'm not letting go. No matter what they say, no matter what they do, I'll remain humble. Mm. I'll remain submitted to them. And as a result, he carried a double portion of the anointing. Yeah. So submission is very powerful. Um, people take it lightly. People misunderstand it. But if we can get the understanding of what it means and what it can do for us, I think it will change a whole lot of things. Yeah. yeah. I think also, even with children in, in, in families, mm. the reason why they end up living lives that are out of order is because in the beginning, they were not submissive to mm. their parents. Mm. Like, they were not under any authority. Mm. So there was no one to teach them. Because a person who submits, they allow themselves to be taught. <sighs> they allow themselves to be shown the way mm. in which they should walk in. That's and, cool. uh, and I believe that man, many of the, the churches that we have today that seem like people are not doing things the way they should is because... They were never willing to submit mm. under anyone, anyone who is above them. Yeah. Or who, who has done, who has walked in the path before. Mm -hmm. And as a result, they do things their way, like yeah. the way they think it should be done. The moment they taste the grace, yeah. they think it's more graced than yeah. their other, the True. others. Yeah. True. If they think they are more anointed than exactly. the others, or they know better than the others. Mm. But on this earth, I don't think there's anyone who knows everything. Yes. We all learn from yes. someone. And you cannot learn if you are proud. Mm. Uh, it takes submission. It takes mm. humility. Because you'd, real, you, you'd find that some of the people that you have to learn from, mm -hmm. they, when you look at them, and you despise them. Yeah. But what they carry matters. You know, I, I, I remember I was sharing with other people the other time that if you ever want to receive from someone, yeah. don't look at their outward appearance. Mm. Rather look at the God behind them, mm -hmm. the grace that is upon them, the anointing that is at work in their lives. That will help you to 
submit to them because it's easy to judge someone looking at their outward appearance. Mm. Yeah. That's true. So that's, true. that's why I told you that this you see this this subject of submission I'm going to read it and read it and read it until it and read it until and read you <laughs> become you become the submission itself. Yeah, yeah, no it's 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 powerful really. It's it's powerful. So um I'm going to maybe read the principles of submission. It talks about being silent in arguments that and you you emphasize that it takes discipline for mm. someone to be silent in arguments uh words spoken with respect mm -hmm. praying for others because yeah it takes a lot to, be, takes uh, to a be able lot. to pray for someone especially else especially when you're going through in the True. things yourself yeah. so yeah yeah and also always being mindful of how you speak like mm. words spoken with respect mm. it's it's not easy because mm -hmm. sometimes you are carried by emotions. Yes. You are angry. You are hurt, and you say things out of <laughs> those emotions. Exactly. Hence, yeah. I said, be silent yes. when it comes to argument, yeah. being uh, involved in an argument. Yeah. Because words cannot be removed. Re yes. You know, they remain. Mm -hmm. Though tomorrow we might be okay, mm -hmm. but words forever remain yes. like for instance yes. when somebody says i don't care about you mm -mm. it will remain like yeah. constantly in your mind that okay this fight we we are fine mm -mm. right mm -mm. now but this person said they don't, they care, don't about care about me, me. Yes. you know it hits home yeah so hence i say be silent yeah that one is very it's important key, yeah. it's it's a huge act of humility mm -mm. because being silent it takes a lot yeah. as well it yeah. takes a lot of discipline. Yes. You you know when someone provokes you like hey this you one are Italian. Yo, you, <laughs> you know, want to you show them. <laughs> you don't know you can't me. Do that to you me. know, yeah. yeah, yeah. So mm -mm. wow. Uh so uh let me just read some of the benefits of submission. Mm -hmm. Uh there is empowerment, mm. success and wealth, mm -hmm. fulfillment. Um, peace and joy, protection, mm -hmm. victory, mm -hmm. provision, good health, long life, uh, eternal life, mm -hmm. rest. Hey, there's guys. Submission comes with a lot it of comes things. with a lot. Comes with a lot of things. Yeah, no. This this is a powerful book, guys. Uh, Thank please. You so much. Yeah, she's gonna give you her details. You must buy. <laughs> you must buy as many as you can. So, yeah, no, I, I really love this book. And it's I believe that those who have read it, they are helped. And those who read it also, they, yeah. will, they will be helped. It will help a lot of people who have different understandings, especially about identity and, yeah. like, the power of a woman. Because mm. I, I believe that people, they, they don't understand it to a certain level. Because when I was reading, like, I saw the chapters, I was like, hey. Yeah, no, it's, it's packed. You, <laughs> Thank you. you, you really worked hard to, to compile it. So, as as we conclude, there there is something that I would like to ask you to do. Um, there is people who are watching right now, mm -hmm. and they still, or they've heard everything that we have spoken about, and maybe just to sum it up and speak to someone who maybe they've been doubting God, the existence of God, mm. and or they, w they were once saved and things happened in their lives and they felt like, you know what, maybe this is wrong, maybe God doesn't exist, maybe it's the wrong idea, you know. Mm -hmm. So based on your own personal experience, your, your testimony, like, what is it that you can tell someone who is in a state where they are doubting the existence of God or they are skeptical about it? They have too many questions about the existence of God, mm. you know? Yeah, so maybe just speak to them. You know, <laughs> Ooh, God is God, yeah. you know? Yeah. I'll just start there. Yeah. Look at me, mm. for instance. Yes. God exists, guys. He is alive yeah god can never turn his back against you yeah it is up to you yes honestly yeah it is up to you he will call you yes but he will not force himself within you yeah you know 
He says, I am at the door, yes. standing knocking mm, mm. and waiting for someone to, to open, open for me. Yeah. So you need to open the first door. Mm. And if you feel like you are being pressed, yeah. kneel down, pray about yes. it. Yes. There is nothing that prayer cannot change. Mm. You know, I, t- I wrote about, I, I dedicated a chapter yes. about prayer mm-hmm. because I understand the power of prayer yes. and how it it is so profound in a person's life. Mm-hmm. If you feel like you are doubting, yes. kneel down and pray. There's a reason why there's a word of God. Yes. You know, read the word, meditate upon the word. Yeah. You will understand the existence of God. Yes. You know, the Bible, people say it's a book. It's not a book. Mm-hmm. It is life itself. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's waiting for you to receive it. Yes. So receive God through his word. Yeah. And doubt will come. Yes, it will come. Mm. But that doubt will be conquered by the word. Yeah. You know, it will be conquered by the spirit of God. Yes. Because he helps us in all situations. Mm-hmm. Even when you don't know what to pray for, the yeah. Bible says the Holy Spirit himself he himself yeah. will help you. Mm. So just be rooted in God. Believe yes. in him. Yeah. Even when circumstances and situations says there is no God, convince yourself if you have to. Yes. And God will definitely fight for you. Yeah. He will show you that he actually does res- uh, yes. exist. Yes. You know, just resist the enemy's thoughts because they do come every mm. single day when mm. you wake up. He's waiting to whisper in your ear yeah. to tell you, you know, there's no God. Mm-hmm. If there was a God, why is your life like this? Yeah. And when you take that, you are gone. Yeah. But if you have the word of God living in you, yes. you are able to resist whatever he tells you by quoting what God says about you, right? Yeah. Yes. You're not beautiful. Yes. Says mm. who? Mm. I am fearfully and, and wonderfully, wonderfully made. made. Yeah. It's like that. Yeah. I carry the image of God. Yes. You know, God is terrible and mm. is also beautiful. Yeah. So it means I carry both mm. uh, terror and beauty yes. of the Lord. Yes. So that's what you need to convince yourself with mm. until you grow to that uh, strong person that you destined to become. Yes. Yeah. No, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Um, so what I'm getting from what you are saying is that number one, we need to open our hearts to God. Yes. If if you have not accepted God as your Lord, Lord and Savior, yes. it's it's the first step yes. to to this journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, the Bible says that with the heart you believe and with the mouth you confess mm. uh, that Jesus Christ it's died and he he yes. rose again yeah. and yeah he is Lord and you will be saved. Mm-hmm. And number two, once you are saved, it's not it's not the end, it's the beginning. It's the beginning. So, number two, you need to find a church. Yes. A, 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 a Bible-believing church, mm-hmm. a faith-based church, mm-hmm. where they believe in the, in the trinity of God, mm-hmm. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, where they believe in the power of the Holy Spirit, mm-hmm. where they believe in preaching the true gospel of God, mm-hmm. and also be a person who reads the Bible for yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, if if... If I know that at the beginning it might be difficult to understand, but look for people you ask questions, people who have been in this journey for long, like build uh, a community. Yes. Be someone who belongs to, who belongs to a community where you speak the word of God, and it will be easier. You you when you are feeling down, you have people to talk to who encourage you, who will pray with you, because indeed God is real. Yeah, and one thing I I feel like. Most of us are missing me. Yeah. It's deliverance. Mm-hmm. Be in a church that uh, that has deliverance, yeah. you know. Yeah. Because most of us, when you say you are born again, yeah. do you know you are denouncing the, the altars of your fa- your forefathers? Yes. And yes. they will fight back. Mm-hmm. They will retaliate. Yeah. So it is important that you have a deliverance-based church mm-hmm. where deliverance is more involved. Yeah, so yeah. that when you go through such things, yes. no, you know you can be delivered. Deliverance mm-hmm. doesn't mean only falling mm-hmm. and rolling. It yes. means being removed yes. from certain disconnected, things. Yes, yeah. Disconnected mm-hmm. from things that yeah. might put you back yes. to that position you were at before. Yeah, so that's yeah. why I feel like most of us are having a problem. Mm-hmm. It's because of our background. We yes. have not dealt with, with, uh, with where the, we come from, yeah, you know, yeah, yes. and it comes to where we are going mm, and mm. it tends to hinder, to hinder or us, yeah. limit us yes. to get to where we need to be. Yeah. So it is very important that you find a church yes. that deals with deliverance, yes, you know. Yes. Yeah. 
Yeah, no. Powerful, powerful. So as we conclude, mm-hmm. um, I believe that there are people out there who would like to buy your book. Yes. So maybe you can share with them how they can get hold of you and how much the book is. Okay. You know, yeah. Okay. Um, the book is available on Amazon. Mm-hmm. And... For now, I'm selling the copies also myself. Yes. And I'm also working on to getting it on stores, okay. which is very difficult, yeah, guys. Yeah, no. You know, yeah, yeah especially I, I when you relate. are just starting. I can relate. Yeah. I, I understand. So it gets difficult. So yeah. now I am actually working on getting it on Take A Lot, okay. which is, it might be there very soon. Yeah. yeah. And if you wanted to get it from me, mm-hmm. These are my contact numbers, which is 067-783-1651. To repeat. Maybe you can repeat it again. Okay. 067-783-1651. All right. Awesome. And then on social media? Social media, you can follow me on Instagram. It's Lungile Mobilwana. Okay. But written Hefeziba yeah. underscore Lungile. Okay. Even on Facebook, the yeah. same. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. No, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, it was it was awesome. It was awesome. Hopefully, yeah. we'll, we'll get to talk more because the book is loaded. And also, maybe we'll get to talk about other topics as well mm-hmm. relating to Christianity, you know. Yeah. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot of things that people don't understand Mm -hmm. when it comes to Christianity and God. So, yeah. No, thank you so much. Thank you for Uh, having me. Thank you so much to our viewers for joining us today. And we'll see you on the next episode. If you would like also to be part of the podcast, if you'd like to join us and be my guest, Mm -hmm. don't hesitate to contact me on Mm 063-509-7711. And also would like to hear from you what you learned from this segment and yes. if you'd like our guests to come back again and share yes. more with us. Thank you. Thank See you on the next episode. Bye. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like the whole one hour. Hmm? I